Seeing the extra cross is a bit too much to complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think if you have the vision in mind, it's not so bad. I don't really have a, an idea in mind on what I want to do for these two models. So I'm just like, let's just buy stuff. <laughs> and Bandai, I'm sure Lord Bandai is pleased. Lord Bandai is pleased. If the solution is to buy more things, they're like, yes, good. That is how you, that is, that is how you, you win. <laughs> Paper, it was a good stream. I was able to keep a flow going. Still need to work on the OBS settings. Yeah. Yeah, all that, all that computer stuff. Gotta get that computer stuff going. Yeah, no weapons, uh, Joey. Very, very kind of blah that it has no weapons. But here, let's rectify that. Today, today, we got this big honking gun. Doesn't this look badass? And then he's got like a big box, a big ramen noodle box. Let's go. Let's, uh, okay, so for the rest of the stream today, guys, how about we just, uh, we take a look at this stuff. We see what we can see. And I don't know if I'll actually be able to finish this. OBS is hard. Yeah, thankfully, again, uh, shout outs to my IRL bro, Night Trap. He's, uh, he's the computer guy. He's the guy. He's the guy behind the guy that makes it all happen, makes it all sing. Got, I've got a guy. I've got a guy. That's what you need there, uh, Purple. You need to, you need to find a guy. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I still have issues, like, I don't know what I'm doing uh, <laughs> often. I'm just like, huh? What are we doing here? I don't know how this works. How does this work? And yeah, I still run into problems, but it's kind of like one of those things where you've, you've assembled like this house of cards and you just don't want to mess around with it. You don't even want to look at it. You don't even want to touch it at all because it's just it, it looks good just just leave it alone <laughs> that's how i treat computers i'm like we've gotten to a point where everything is working pretty good so just 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 leave it alone don't touch it don't touch it i build plamo my computers are not my thing yeah yeah exactly like hello i this is this is how i paint you see these you see these things this is how i paint you think i know about computers <laughs> you think i know about technology this is how I paint. <laughs> All right. So yeah, for the rest of the stream, guys, let's uh, let's work on this. Let's see how far we can get. But yeah, Joey, like uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the whole idea of like getting a good flow going. That's um, it's a good point. Like it's just a, it's a it's kind of like a mentality. It's kind of like a, as you said, a flow to to having your stream just just going nicely. And uh, it can be a little weird at times. It can be a little tough to kind of get to that to get to that state. I'm not really saying that that I know what I'm doing, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but um, but yeah, my whole position when I first started streaming was like, like I know I'm going to be streaming to absolutely no one. Like, and I have for for many many uh, weeks, many months. I would. I would have like an audience at best of one, <laughs> you know, and uh, and I still was just talking. I was basically just talking and talking and talking because my my thought was like in the off chance someone's going to hop into your stream. Right. What are they going to see? What like j j just imagine if you were in that position, you're someone that's just randomly browsing Twitch. Right. And. And you're like, okay, well, let's just click on this guy. Let's click on Epo. What's this all about, right? You have, you have 10 seconds, 30 seconds at best to, to leave an impression on someone, right? Because think about how you browse like Twitch or the internet at large. I click off. I'll, I'll click on something and then I just click off like in a matter of seconds. That's how I use YouTube, you know, as well, or browsing the internet or 
Twitch or anything. I'll just I'll look at something really fast. Is this something I'm actually interested in? Prom like it's probably not most of the time and then I'm done, right? So you've got you've got like 10 seconds, 30 seconds to leave an impression on someone. And if in those 10 seconds you're just not talking at all or you're being like, you know, you're you're just not an entertaining, amusing, educational, you're not any of those things, then you've lost. Then then someone like me is clicking off immediately, right? So you just you just have to you just have to kind of have that in mind. You have to even though there might be an audience of no one, you never know when someone's gonna hop in and you can be like you can if you're already talking, if you're already making it a habit, I guess that's the best way to put it. If you kind of make it a habit, um, that's you're, you're kind of already winning. You're, you're getting, I don't want to say winning, but like you're giving yourself a better chance, I guess. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Uh, purple. I use the garbage Twitch program I have tried getting OBS working so many times and it's always doo doo the Twitch program. Oh, it's that that one is like um isn't it isn't it in beta? Is that the one I'm thinking of? I've never tried it. It's not good. Why does it why is it not good? Purple Evo is best Oh you oh you <laughs> Jose he is wink wink is this is this what we're doing, guys? Are we gonna start uh, just complimenting each other? Just gonna circle jerk of compliments. <laughs> but yeah, I just I mean I'm I'm trying out here. Obviously, uh, guys like Jose, guys like guys like Joe, Eddie, you guys have been at it for your your Carmi. You guys have been at it for a long time. I learned a lot from you guys, you know, for sure. I learned a lot from all of you. And I try and I try and just I, I try and just do what I can. Purple's like OBS for dummies. <laughs> Purple is like OBS for dummies. Maybe it's one of those things. Yeah, if you can kind of try out OBS just like a little bit at a time, you can kind of get a little more used to it just just bit by bit, you know? And of course there's there's like a wealth of information on on YouTube that you can check out. Uh Joe, I mean everyone starts somewhere but find your own groove eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's a good point there. Joe. It's a good point there. I think uh I think um I think for for a lot of streamers like at least the way I want to approach it is like I always want to be trying to trying to find a groove trying to find uh, and exploring new things I, I feel like you know I don't want to settle into something too much do you know what I mean do you know what I mean I don't know why every time I say that I want to also say it like a British person but yeah you're right you gotta settle into a groove that nice little butt groove Jose still finding my groove <laughs> Purple, I learned how to put eyes on from Carmi. <laughs> uh, Joey, a story I've been thinking about recently was this time when Dave Chappelle was new to stand up and did his act to an empty room because it was the job. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's the job. So I have a friend that's a professional wrestler. Like, like... I, I kid you not. <laughs> These are the circles that I run in. I have a friend that's, uh, yeah, just straight up a professional wrestler. And I've seen that. I've seen that in person where where he's wrestled. I've, I've you know, because I want to show up and sh so show some support to my friend. I'd, I'd come to his, uh, his events, right? And in the early days, there was, like, no one. He was wrestling for basically an audience of me and bacon you guys know bacon and that would be it that's it can you imagine like 
like for i think for a lot of people that alone would be discouraging enough that would that alone would just be like enough to just shut you down and be like yeah i don't know if this is for me i'm done but he kept at it he kept at it and now he's uh yeah he's he's still doing it man it's pretty cool <laughs> there's the badonkadonk there <laughs> neato yeah so this okay we've got we've got something guys oh look at that Woo transforms and we can put it in the hand uh is this the right hand this isn't really the trigger finger hand but let's just run with it let's just run with it and Ta -da! Yay! Has a gun now. It's a pretty cool looking gun, and I, I do like that it can do this. I mean, why would I want it to do that? I don't really know, but I like it. There we go. There are some nubs that we gotta sand. We'll do that. We'll do that in due time. But I'm always so excited to put together the parts. What does it say here? Mm, okay yeah 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 select a part to attach yeah oh you can have it like kind of like a shoulder mounted gun sure 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 let's see um rabiot each color ops s8 one six. This is such a, a weird naming structure. I guess it's like optional parts eight. Uh, one six. But yeah, that's the job. If you're a, if you're a comedian, you just gotta. And there's no one there. That's that's what you gotta do. You gotta do your set, and no one's there. And, and like I said, my friend who uh, who's a wrestler, you've got no one no one is actually watching or, or barely anyone you still gotta put on a show you still gotta do it and uh and yeah like for sure for me and i guess for a lot of people out there on twitch it's like it's like you might not have anyone you might barely have anyone but you kind of just have to do it you kind of have to you, ha you kind of have to put out the feelings and the vibe that you want to go for regardless regardless if anyone's paying attention I guess I'm very happy uh, that that I have all you folks here today and, and for the regulars that come in I'm, I'm, I'm actually very very happy for that that all of you come in and hang out I'm very appreciative of that uh, it's, that's not something uh, that I take for granted um, it's it's really cool it's really cool to do that it's really cool of you for to, to hang out with me sorry i'm getting all sappy guys <laughs> i'm getting all feely touchy feely yeah i really do appreciate it i always try and mention that at least once or twice a stream because it's uh you know that's a real thing for sure and especially in the especially when it comes to like the art world the artsy fartsy oh, this is the wrong piece i cut the wrong piece what am i doing see this is what happens Getting distracted here. What do I need? Six. Oh, this one. Yeah, like, um, for a very long time, I would be, like, doing my art, doing my artsy fartsy art or my illustration work. And really, you know, it's, it's hard to connect with people. It's, it's hard out there trying to show your work to people, um, in that world, like, on Instagram and blah, 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 all of that stuff. It's not easy mm. but you know getting out there on twitch and kind of and kind of just being there and just really showing showing off all the different things that i do whether it be painting or drawing or painting models or playing games like all of that to me is just part of part of all the same thing in a sense you know it's it's what I like to do and I get to kind of show it off and I'm glad that 
all of you find it interesting, I guess. <laughs> Paper Joey, I keep a separate tray for pieces that come off the runner early. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, here. Here, here, here. Let's put it... Let's put that baby right here. Right here. Stray. It's my tray of strays. My astrea. Okay. What's happening here? We put the hand... Oh, okay. So this is like an optional bulky hand bit, I guess. Will this work, though? Oh. Oh. Oh, okay. Now we have an extended bit. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Oh, and speaking of 30-minute missions, so uh, this past week they've showed a lot of interesting stuff um, from the Bandai... What is it called? The Bandai Hobby Weekend or the Japan Hobby Expo. There's a lot of interesting things, not just for Bandai, but for Kotobukiya and, and a number of other um, uh, manufacturers. Really, really great stuff. Like, just it just made me feel really excited for, for so much that's going to be coming out in the near future. Including from Bandai, there's the, uh, there's the VF... What is it? The VF1? Oh, from Macross Plus? Chef's Kiss. Chef's Kiss. I am there. Put me down. Put me down for two. Put me down for three. I don't know. <laughs> I definitely am going to get that. I'm super excited about that. Um, what else? What else? And yeah, for 30-minute for missions, they showed a number of very cool 30-minute missions things, including um, including kind of like a demon-looking character, which is pretty cool. And then there was a... Uh, there's a lot of nice extras, like... Like, mm, like lenses, like 3D, 3D jewel lens sticker parts. That's pretty cool. What else? What else? What else? There's like cables and yeah, just a bunch of interesting things. I'm definitely, definitely uh, looking forward to all of that, and as well as um, there's a couple of new 30 minute sister models. All of that, all of that was really, really neat. Oh, Blue Eyes White Dragon! Yes! That is very, very cool. Blue Eyes White Dragon! Oh my god! This is... That's the start of something very dangerous. Can I say that? Like, dude. Blue Eyes White Dragon, that is just the start. They're gonna put out a bunch of other monsters. And I'm here for it. I am excited. OPS 8-2... Joey, you definitely need three of those. Yeah, for for each uh, each uh, gestalt form or whatever. <laughs> oh, here's the other one. We gotta make another missile. Actually, you need a four so you can cut it in half and tape it back when you're done. <laughs> oh man! And can you imagine they're gonna do they're gonna do more? They're gonna do more. So excited. Oh, also at the hobby store. They did have Ranka Lee <laughs> for Siang. I know that Siang has Ranka Lee. We were talking. Uh, we were talking previously about what model has the best butt. What Mecha Masume model has the best butt in all in all the world? And I have heard a number of people say that Ranka Lee from the from the Virtua Fighter. Sorry, the Virtua Veritech Fighter Girls, the VF Girl line. She's got the best butt. And Siang helpfully helpfully was like, let me look, let me see, let me just let me just let me just pull her up. <laughs> and and he confirmed that it was a clean, smooth butt. I think that's what he said. She has a clean, smooth butt. Or a smooth and clean butt. <laughs> I, um... 
It's a big box. I didn't realize that box was so huge, dude. I... I'm tempted. I'm tempted. But I think that Siang was saying that it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. It's up there, but not the best. <laughs> but yeah, they showed a number of um, Mecha Masume kits coming up in the future from Koto. Uh, over on the Koto side, they've got uh, Horse Girl. That's the one I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, for a good long while, they had only shown just the artwork for said horse girl and I was like cool 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 like you know we'll have to wait and see the illustration itself was was caused a bit of a stir just by virtue of the fact of of the muscularity the sheer muscularity um, yeah she's buff she is her her horse bits <laughs> are jacked she's so jacked and uh and i kind of love it <laughs> no shame i have no shame in saying that i like the muscularity yeah she looks good what are we looking for we're looking for ops 8 2 okay here's one ah here it is this is uh yes 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 this is what we need um but when the model when we saw the black and white version of the model, it was like, oh man, they did a great job in terms of making her look just like the uh, concept art. So yeah, I have no idea how much she's gonna cost because she looks huge, right? Like, you know, your average Mecha Masume model is is uh, is bigger than this. This is actually quite sm is is significantly smaller than something from Koto like a Megami device model or a Sosai Shoujo Tan model, those are about like this much taller from the feet to the head, something like that. And just imagine Horse Girl now, and she's gonna have all of this, all of this going on behind her. <laughs> Ashwin, what one? What's up, Ashwin? Nice to have you here. Oh, you can't be here for long. Going to a party. We we'll want to see if any dogs were streaming while well, <laughs> smoke a pre-shaved J. Nice. Well, uh, glad to have you here. Enjoy your party. Enjoy your party. Uh, Joey, I haven't done any waifu kits yet. Yeah. Um, they're pretty cool. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I said that, but what I really want to say is I kind of love building them I'm kind of I'm definitely a lot more interested and I have a lot more fun building them than I do straight up like Gundams that's just me that's just me you know uh, but I don't know it's uh, it's fun she give it a try sometime give it a try sometime If you can, if you can get over that initial hump of like, this is kind of weird, because <laughs> you know, admittedly, it can't. It is kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of out there. Let's uh, you know, let's, let's call it spade a spade. Let's be real here. It's a little unusual, like paint, like building little robot guys, little little robot people, little little mech suits, your little Gundams, your little grandpas. That's all fine and good. Suddenly, you want to paint, you want to build a build a, a scantily clad robot girl suddenly uh, you know people are gonna look at you funny what's up with that <laughs> but yeah I enjoy it I enjoy it you can uh, we've been talking about the 30 minute sisters you can try one of those models um, you know I've been showing that one and we've been talking about how they don't really come with a lot of accessories at least the the ones that I've seen and you kind of have to piecemeal pick up different accessories as you go along um and that's that's you know that, that can be a little annoying right but if you do have other model kits if you do have extra models or extra bits from your other models especially from bandai and their one in 144th scale models those will work those like the hands should accept uh, any kind of gun or weapon or sword 
from a 1 in 144 scale model. So that's kind of neat. <laughs> Ashwin Wifey was back and horse. Yeah, it's. Did you look at it? Did you find it, Ashwin? There's a. I don't have the picture of it. But yeah, there's a. Yeah, she's, she's, she's a big yell. Um, paper. I think it's just because I don't want to add too many kids to my battle. Commitment. Yeah, commitment issues. Commitment issues. And these girls, you know, these girls, they demand. They demand. They demand your time. They demand your attention. And your money. <laughs> I'm talking about the kids, by the way. Um, okay, we got to build two of these things, so let's do that. Oh, we can get this one here. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good thing, like, to kind of knock out your, knock out the models, finish your plate, so to speak, get the models done that you presently have, and not get too overwhelmed by your backlog. Uh, you know, it's going to happen eventually. I'll, t I'll tell you that much. The, the longer you're in, the longer you're in the shit, the longer that you're into this, it's just going to happen that you're going to kind of have a backlog as, as, as I have one. Um, and again, that's kind of why I'm trying not to go too crazy presently. We'll see. We'll see how actually, <laughs> how that actually works out. But I'm not trying to go too bananas. Yeah, we're just, uh, you know, we're just having a nice, relaxing Saturday, Saturday evening, putting together some, putting this together. We'll probably finish this up. We'll finish this thing up and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll wrap things up. It won't be too long today. Not looking to stream for four hours or, f or something like that. Gonna, I had a bit of a long day today. Um, I was at a comic convention actually, Ashwin. Um, you weren't here for that, but yeah, I was explaining that I went to one, and it was pretty cool, pretty fun. I didn't buy any comics, although, you know, I think I, I really want to pick some stuff up eventually. I just I just been, I haven't had any luck finding the comics that I'm actually looking for, you know? The curse of having weird, obscure taste, I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was fun, it was fun. And yeah, tomorrow uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a load off. I'm gonna just chill and hang out and uh, and build, maybe build some more, maybe paint some more. But but really, I'm gonna I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to actually playing some video games. And actually, I might I might also work on some stream stuff. There's some uh, there's some streaming things that I'd like to get squared away. So tomorrow and and maybe even Monday. I like to stream on Monday, but. Uh, but uh, I might not, just for the fact that I want to to work on some stream stuff and some YouTube stuff, blah blah blah. Kind of, kind of set up the rest of the month. Let's put it that way. I kind of want to take a bit of time and uh, and get the rest of the month kind of planned out. Let's, yeah, let's 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 put it that way. And if we can do that. Uh, we might have some fun. We can get into some fun stuff for the rest of the week. Ashwin, the same. My taste isn't obscure, but it's old and in high demand. Ah, yeah, yeah. See, I mean, yeah, that's what we were talking about. Just We've just been in it for far too long. <laughs> just in it. We need harder stuff. We need stronger stuff. It's like Batman, Superman, get out of here. Ninja Turtles, fine. But I need the Zuli Turtles. Give me that Zuli turtles, <laughs> which I think only you and me might actually know what we're talking about. I need some of that Zuli shit. Uh, Joey, I like to spend dedicated time off. Uh, ba -ba -ba, stream doing, spend dedicated time off stream doing, stream related stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I want to take time off to do, take time off from streaming, to think about streaming <laughs> exactly oh and by the way everyone uh yes happy october we are we are now in the midst of october good lord which is pretty wild to me i i can't even comprehend fully comprehend it that it's already 
October. Ugh, ugh. But nevertheless, happy October. Uh, famously, uh, and and my artist pals might already be aware of this. There's the the long running event known as Inktober, which I'm not participating in. But I do know that a number of other artists have kind of created alternative events, and and I very well might be joining something like that. I might be participating in something. I haven't really decided what I'll be doing, but I wanna do something. I think I'm gonna be kind to myself this time around and practice self-care and and uh, only do a few illustrations, not like every single day. And that's the other thing I wanna mention is that for anyone that's been paying attention to my art Instagram, and I'm sure Night, Night Bot, has um has spammed it already but i i did participate in sketch timber last month and i i completed it yay i did it which is like you know it's a cool feeling it's a cool feeling to to actually have that squared away and and to have actually wrapped that up i did 30 illustrations one illustration per day so that was pretty neat um oh they're telling us that we can take this out then we take this doohickey so yeah, if anyone's interested, you can check, take a look. You can check a look. You can check a look at my uh, illustrations for all that I did all in the month of September. And yeah, it's pretty neat. And I'd like to keep the momentum going in some fashion and do more, but we'll see. Eshwin. Uh, I need more Bisley Batman or Bisley anything. Uh, Slain. Give me some Corbin Shizzle. Corbin. Mm. Going hard on spooky vibes all month. Nice. Love October. Yeah, it's just it's just in the air. I I like I like the vibes. I like the the mood in the air in the season. Okay, we can. What are they telling us that we can do with this? It goes like that, and then you can. You can sort of do this. Let me see. Yeah, so this is like a suitcase. It's funny. I bought <laughs> I bought a plastic model suitcase, everyone. And the the little handle can go down. And it can go up. Wow. 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 Where is it? Here, I, I'll do it. Don't spend your money, guys. Don't spend your uh <laughs> your energon cubes. Where is it? I'm too slow though. Wow. There it is. Wow. <laughs> mm. Joey, do you think you've gained anything from the experience? That's actually a, a, a very interesting question there, Joey. Um, yes, I think I think I did actually because I, I've participated in previous month-long challenges like that uh inktobers and i would say with inktober in the 31 drawings that i did i did it twice twice or three times um there would be a very smaller there would be a smaller subsection of the of the work that I produced that I was really, really happy with. You know what I mean? Because you're trying to do 31 drawings every day. And, and I had a very different kind of mindset and approach to my, to my workflow, I guess you want to put it back then. And, and that approach really held me up. Uh, and we can talk about that more another time. Actually, one thing I'd like to do possibly the next time I stream is uh, stream and talk about the, the art that I made uh, all month long. I think that might be kind of fun to just kind of look at it. So we can talk about that a bit more. But what I will say is I kind of, for one thing, in a, in a more practical sense, I felt like it was a great opportunity to learn more about using Procreate. Uh, some of you might know that I recently bought a new iPad. My old iPad busted. I took that as an opportunity to, to you know, see what was out there and, and, and use it as a drawing device use it as a tool to to create artwork with my older ipad wasn't really capable of doing that at least not to the level where it was like like the level that i was that i would want so yeah 
in this time, this whole time, it was sort of like a learning experience to see how I could push Procreate, how I could use the pen, getting used to the workflow of, of, of Procreate and just drawing on the iPad in general. And, and for the most part, I'm really, really happy with that experience. But the other thing is, is also like a different kind of mindset about, about creating artwork, creating images. And that's something that, uh, again, I think, I think, uh, to, it's a big topic, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm so far up my ass, but it's, it's a it's a bigger topic that we can kind of get into another time. Uh, pro probably the next time I stream, maybe on a Monday or a Tuesday. But um, but yeah, we'll get into it and we'll talk about it. It'll be it'll be good, I think. So please look forward to that. Uh, OPS eight three was good and 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 so i was talking about how with these past challenges daily challenges uh there were times where i was wasn't too happy with my artwork but this time around i think i'm happy with almost everything that i made you know and and that's 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 pretty rare like even even on the best in the best case scenario where you're or you're making art in optimal conditions and, and outside of a challenge, you know, for creative people, and it, and this is beyond simply making illustrations in art, but this applies to any kind of creative endeavor, you know, you're going to find that people aren't always satisfied with the work that they produce, you know, like it, it what do they say, like you're your own harshest critic? But generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with the, with the art that I made this time. Uh, practically all of them I think that there's something kind of good uh, good going on with them and again that that's kind of related to a, a, a mindset a shift in my mindset and and maybe just to, to put it in broad terms I think I think in the past I was really caught up in maybe the meaning of things and the and 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 creating an image and what does what is it going to be about <laughs> you know like i would spend a long time thinking about that which is kind of a weird thing to say and lately my my mindset nowadays is more along the lines of let's not think about the concept necessarily and let's just make let's just make an image for the sake of making an image yes that's kind of like the the uh the change in my mindset got to write that one down do i keep notes i do keep notes i have actually so uh, it's interesting that you mentioned that because i know you're you you're really great about uh about keeping your notes and you've got that notebook it's really really cool um, and I, sh I should definitely take some pointers from you. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to more of your streams where you discuss your process about taking notes. But but yeah, I, I kind of have a couple of ways of taking notes. I do write in my sketchbook, and I have multiple sketchbooks that I just throw down all my weird random thoughts in, in addition to drawing and stuff like that. But I do also have like a file, like an ongoing file on like uh like you know my computer or handheld device where i where i keep track of notes i and and that's a little more convenient also you know just just having something on the computer or rather uh on the phone or or ipad where you can just jot down those ideas real quick in the notepad and that's the other thing too is I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but but for me, like, if if I get this idea, if I get like an idea for an image or a concept or or something, an idea for something, period. I don't always have like my notebook on me, but I do have my iPad on me pretty much all the time. So you know, this it's just a place where I can just jot down my notes really fast. So I've got this file. <laughs> I've got this file of like all these crazy ideas and uh and yeah that's one of those things where it's ready for you 
when you need like an idea too. That's the other thing. Is so many times I get caught up in, in thinking about an idea, thinking about concepts. But one thing that I, I think is really underrated and no one really talks about is how you should just rip off yourself. <laughs> that's that's another thing, another kind of mindset thing that I was thinking about lately was this idea of of just ripping off yourself. Just do it. Instead of you know, it's it's not good. Don't don't rip off other people, right? <laughs> but you can rip off yourself. And that's 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 another thing that I've been doing. <laughs> Uh, paper trade, that's why my Discord has become my screenshots from books and internet social media. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I do remember that you you were saying that. That's really interesting. So so that would then be basically a private Discord uh, that that's just for you then. Is that how it works? I, I'm still... I, I have to confess, guys. I'm still a Discord noob. I don't actually really understand anything about the modern world. <laughs> I just muddy, I just, I just make it, I just make it work somehow, but, the, like, yes, the, if you have a Discord account, does that mean that you, everyone also has a Discord server? Is that what it, how it works? So I could kind of do something like that too? I have no idea. Mm, okay, this goes here like this, and then this goes like this. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we're going to have to clean up these parts more. But I, I also like to kind of see how everything looks assembled. Just to get a better idea of how it'll all look as like a flat surface. Rather than like sanding this one piece and erasing the nub. But then it kind of then becomes uneven when once you assemble everything else. That's kind of why I did it this way. Wait a minute, does this hatch open? Oh shoot, does it? Huh? Oh, it does. Look at that. That's pretty neat, look. It kind of has like an extra little, a little angle to it can have it going down or that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Mm, 11. Uh, Joey, I'm sure there are third-party note-taking apps, but I already use Discord. Hmm. Do you think Do you think that there's other people that use it in that way, or are you on the cutting edge here? Are you, uh... This is, uh... This is a Paper Joey original technique. Yeah, it's a great idea though. It's very interesting. I've never heard of anyone uh, doing it that way, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And yeah, like I said, I'm definitely looking forward to more of your notebook streams and, and showing how you you utilize your notes. And you're also very um, organized in your thoughts, I find, uh, from what I had seen so far. You have very organized and structured kind of thoughts. And that carries over into like how you do your notebooks and the ordering system and the way you do the dates and everything very interesting oh so also are, are you a, a, a fan of board games it seems like you the way you structure your your dating system the way you did the dates for your notebook was kind of like based around board games uh, if I if I'm uh, understanding that correctly I'm just wondering if you uh, if you enjoy boy board games because um, that is something that I really l I love like looking at board games. I love the design and the packaging, and I love when board games have models and then I can paint them. But I actually don't play too many of them. I'd like to rectify that though. I definitely would like to play more. Uh, Joey. Uh, there are definitely other people that do this. Got the idea from someone else. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Not really. Uh, like D and D, and those note intensive role playing board games. Oh, so you wait. So you so you, so you don't play D and D even even though, yeah. There's a lot of note taking involved. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, there's 
man, I, I really love board games just because uh, from like a design and art perspective, they're, it's kind of like a beautiful package of art and design, <laughs> right? If you appreciate those things, then then yeah, board games have, it's just a little tight little package when they're done well. And also information design and how you communicate uh, instructions and how you can communicate uh, how the rules are played and clarity. I find that really interesting. And I actually had a, a brief period of time where I was just looking at I was just looking at rule books, rule books for board games, rule books for games, because because usually they're freely available, right? You don't actually have to buy the rules. You need the thing that that's important about like a board game when you buy it is like all the extra accoutrements, all the extra stuff, because you need to know. Because you need that stuff to play the game. But the rules are often freely available. Because if you have a gaming night with friends, if you have friends, mm -hmm. you know, you need a, you need everyone to be on the same page. And you can kind of like send them a link to the rules of a board game so that, so that they can do their homework ahead of time. Doesn't that sound fun? Doing homework? <laughs> studying to play a board game ahead of time before you hang out with your friends uh yeah so i just like looking and reading at reading that stuff because uh again from like a design perspective i think it's really interesting how people go about communicating the rules for a game for example very very interesting slash actually boring <laughs> Uh, Paper Joey, rule books are interesting things. I remember getting lost in them and game manuals as a kid. Yeah. And actually, uh, it's a shame. I mean, act it's good. It's good for the environment that that video games don't really come with manuals anymore, right? But I'm also kind of sad. I'm kind of sad for the very same reason that I was explaining about about board games and, and that you were talking about too, uh, Paper Joey just it was just a cool little thing to get lost in. It was a it was a little teaser into the world of a video game before you cracked it open. Maybe like on the car ride home or something. You know, you, if you couldn't wait to play the game, you could crack open that book. Or if you just you just it just wasn't game time yet. You could still have that manual or a game magazine to look at. <laughs> I, I definitely remember those times. And, and you know, right at the cusp of, of like, sort of the, the shift into, into taking away the rule books, right? The, or rather, the instruction manuals for games. We were seeing, like, a a beautiful like renaissance of amazing amazing rule books or rather manuals I should say some amazing stuff was being put out and then and then shortly after that period was gone and then we didn't have it anymore and I remember being really excited for a Nintendo DS game called Electroplankton right I don't know if you guys remember this game it's it, it's actually a so it's a it's a nintendo ds game but it was developed by an artist like an artist artist media artist guy in japan whose name escapes me right now but it's basically a musical toy that you can play with your nintendo your nintendo ds it's not really a game with like a win state or anything like that but it was an amusing little musical toy and that was the very first Nintendo DS game that I played. Because uh, I was just hyped. I was hyped. I was like, you know, I'm an artsy-fartsy student. I'm like, this is a game made by an artsy-fartsy guy. And I like handhelds. Let's go. <laughs> but the manual, on top of all of that, the actual instruction manual for that game 
was really, really cool. Because it was, again, this tiny little piece of art and design. And it was printed on, like, amazing, like, really interesting paper, too. You know, like, it, it was it was all these little details that they paid attention to to make it a cool little package. And, and yeah, that's just not a thing anymore. And I would say overall, that's a good thing. Again, I think overall it's a good thing. But I do sort of miss the fact that uh, video games used to be this... It wasn't just about the game that you played, right? But it was this whole package. It was the, it was the box art. It was the manual, you know? It was all the little extra little things that came with it. And yeah, that's not really a thing anymore. And and maybe that's why I appreciate uh, uh, board games more, is because they they still kind of uphold those values, I guess. They still kind of do that. They still are board games just by their nature of being a physical game. They have to focus on 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 real things, I guess. They have to focus on that to some extent. Okay. Uh, if it was a toy, I don't see why not give a book to go with it. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just a... Uh, it's just one of those things. Just one of those things now. Okay, so we can fold this thing up and then chuck it in here. Does it fit? How does this fit? Okay. Oh, this folds in. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. And then you can put the suitcase. Oh, I love this. I actually <laughs> I was like, am I going to get this? Is this is this uh Is this something that I actually need? Is this something I want? But I love the fact that I can put all these things in tiny little compartments. This is very amusing to me. This is actually Well, I did that. I I had to do that because uh, some of these things weren't going to fit properly. But yeah, there's a certain order to put these things in. This is kind of cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool, right? I wasn't actually sure if, if I was going to dig it, but I kind of dig it. Kind of down with little compartments. I didn't know I was going to be into that. <laughs> okay, you stack that and stack that. Got the supply drop. Oh, there's more. You can put the, um, you can clip the, uh, silencer bar barrel. Let me see. How does that go? I am not understanding. Let me see. Ah, okay. The silencer barrel gets clipped to this. Actually, I don't know if it's a silencer, but anyways. And then what else? Let me see. I'm looking at the instructions off screen. Let's put it on screen. Okay, and then this handle here, which I took off. This goes just like this. Yes, indeed. Aha! And then it closes just like that. It's a little supply drop. <laughs> supply drop. All, all, the, all the loot. It's like uh, Borderlands or something. Get your loot. That's kind of neat. There's still some more things here. Let's see. Uh, there's another tray. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. There looks to be... What is this thing? OPSA2? Ooh. I miss a good loot shooter, but I'm not into Apex or Fortnite. What about, uh... What about Destiny? Do you like Destiny? That's a looter shooter, isn't it? I played just a bit of that. And I liked it. I thought it was fun. But I... I, uh... I didn't get too deep into it. I definitely could've... You know... Spent a whole lot more time playing that game, for sure. 
and getting super super deep into it but it's good it's fun I like Diablo like like just straight up Diablo I really enjoy Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 Diablo 3 took a while to kind of get to a point where it was like really really good but eventually eventually it, it turned into a really good game so yeah, there's another tray here that you can put stuff on. It looks like we'll have to take off this stuff right here. Okay, and it's telling us that you can use this to kind of affix other weapons and other, other extra equipment onto it. This part can be compatible with the backpack of each unit. Oh, you can put backpacks in here. Right on. Let's see. So yeah, I'd have to take all this out, which I kind of don't want to do right now. But you can instead use it as like a as like a shelving unit to put your stuff in shelves. So that's another way you can do that. Pretty cool. Purple uh, Fortnite no build is good. Oh yeah, I actually didn't know there was Fortnite no build. <laughs> uh, oh, you're playing it right now. Cool. So even in the game world, even when it comes to games, Purple is still building. He's building IRL, and he's building digitally. There's the train. There's Train Chan. I I I blow my train whistle right now, but it's kind of it's kind of getting late-ish, and I don't really want to cause a a ruckus. Uh, OJ OJ one two yeah, there's all these extra parts here. Let's get let's. This is actually the last step. I'm not really understanding what this stuff is for, but anyways, let's let's work on this. Uh, two two and three. Building a Zaku right now. <gasps> Damn it. Paper Joe, you've got balls. That's sweet. Oh yeah, I think I remember you mentioning that. That's awesome. I uh I've been trying to look for some balls. <laughs> I've been trying to look for them. Can't find them anywhere locally. Might have to go on the old internet. Yeah. I love the design of those balls. I've got a Haro that I built waiting to finish that up, paint it up. I don't really have any ideas on how to paint Haro. I want to do something different. And I was considering weathering it and doing the whole shebang of rusting and weathering, but I just I just finished two models that are weathered, so yeah, I, I kinda don't want to do that again. I don't I don't think so. I could my mind can be changed, but so far I don't think I want to do that. So yes, I'm I'm open up to ideas for anyone that wants to uh, that has an idea on on what to do for Haro. There you go. Got that. Uh, OJ five, six, and four. Five, six, and four. Included two sets. Oh, we got to do this twice. Let's just get all the biddies that we need. Five, six, and four. Yeah, the ball, the the balls look really fun. And again, like the thing about Haro, the thing about the balls is that is that you there's a lot of space to kind of play around with. There's a lot of flat surfaces, kind of, and you can just no one has any expectations <laughs> for like Haro or the balls, so you can kind of just run with it and do something fun. Uh, purple, I'm sanding uh, Master Grade 2.0 Zaku to power tubes and whoa, for yo, you're <laughs> how many arms do you have, Purple? Are you a wait? Are you an octopus? How are you doing all these things at the same time? How are you doing all that? You're gonna have to have multiple limbs, possibly even multiple eyebrows, <laughs> eyebrows, eyeballs doing a lot 
Uh, Joey, I saw two at the store, but I thought that would be greedy. <laughs> Haro Psycho Thunderbolt Edition. <laughs> Psycho Frame? Psychomu? Uh, I think I got all the pieces. Oh, six. There should be another six here somewhere. But I'm blind. I can't. Oh, I took it out previously. That's right. That's right. Joey, you don't like Haro. What? Haro is an innocent, an innocent little. A little ball of fun. How could you? How could you not like Haro? It's oh no! It's the opposite of a cube. You know, a sphere is just a cube that it's been sanded a lot. <laughs> this is a cube. It's, a sphere is still a cube in my opinion. It's just been sanded so that all the edges have been rounded out. So, you would think I would hate, like, uh, Haro if that was the case, but no, I actually enjoy Haro. <laughs> Got a loading screen. Okay. Again, some of these parts could use a little more love in terms of sanding. But I'm feeling a little lazy, so I might not do that all too well just now. But the uh, this this glass file is pretty nifty in terms of getting it to a point where it's it's decent without much stress. So I, I do enjoy that, and there's there's other brands of sanding files out there that presumably can do an even better job. I don't know. Bum, bum, bum. Do that. All right. Yeah, we're we're doing good for time. We're just gonna we're gonna finish this baby up, and then we'll probably wrap it up. So let's just see, and then we'll actually play. We'll play with our toys actually first. We'll see what we can do about putting this on to some of these models here. I've had a a plate of snacks that I haven't dug into at all. I have a banana. I have some pie. And I, it's just it's just staring at me. So I gotta do something about that. Okay, this goes like that, and then this goes like this, like this. Okay, something like that. Okay. Understood. And now we have to do this again. There's two of them. <laughs> Anger. I know. What am I doing? Gotta get my snacks. Gotta get my snack on. And yes, so for this month of October, I do want to play some some spooky games. I don't really have a gotta get to that banana exactly i'm playing for my I'm, I'm streaming for my banana right now we're gonna get there we're gonna get there hmm? Hmm? did i say pie no pie pumpkin pumpkin pie <laughs> and there's a banana and this is a square of dark organic dark chocolate and bean bark or something it's weird it's a weird thing it's a weird healthy thing but it's all right oj18 i wonder if they're going to actually explain to me what i can do with this stuff pine pine I'm gonna eat some pine Yeah, but from the whole Tokyo 
thing. Just really, really exciting stuff. Um, yeah, it's just um, looking forward to s to picking up some of them in the future. We were talking about that earlier. It's great. It's great. A lot of stuff. And also, I was reading earlier today that um, the Gundam, the GBWC, the Gundam World Building Competition, the the Canadian division, the Canadian side of the competition, uh, the submissions have closed. I think it's closed. So. So anyone who is intending to compete for that, they've already completed their models, they've, take the, they've taken their photos, and they've sent it and submitted it. I think that's what happened recently. And so because of that, I've seen on Instagram a couple of uh, Canadian builders that have now re unveiled their work, you know, because they've been working away possibly in secrecy or, or partial secrecy because they don't want to show their hand. They don't want to show... Uh, you know the rest of the model they don't want to show too much of what they're working on for fear of of, uh, of getting copied or possibly um, you know just just showing too much before it's competition time right so so yeah um, right now on Instagram and Twitter and stuff you have an opportunity to take a look at some of these models and it's really really cool I love looking at uh, the stuff that people have been making just really amazing stuff um and yeah good luck good luck to all everyone that's competing in that just it's just really neat and if you win that i believe you get to have your models compete in the japan like the big the big one like the olympics the olympics of gunpla building <laughs> in japan and it might be a remote event i'm actually not sure but uh yeah that's really cool Oh, Joe. Joe is saying consume beverage. Thank you, Joe. I didn't check it in time. This is my Clamato. My Clamato. Mmm, clam juice. Amazing. Thank you for reminding. Getting some water, too. Getting some water groovy yeah so that's really neat and and at the same time <laughs> no problem no problem thank you thank you at the same time is the there is the golden demon in the world of warhammer there's a very similar uh event comparable to the gbwc and yeah, it's it's basically who is the best painter man? Who is the best Warhammer painter man in all the world, in all the land? And the the interesting thing about that guys is that uh, they did not have the Golden Demon competition in 2020 or 2021 uh, because of the world, the state of the world, as you all know. And so this has been a competition in the making for several years at this point and I've been following a number of builders uh, you know really famous painters really famous uh, builders uh, working on their stuff for years now for this very moment isn't that wild for like for two years or something like that there's been people working on the very on like one model to make it look amazing to get to this point They've had just that long. And some of the stuff I've been seeing is just amazing. There's one there's one um, painter. His name is David Soper. And uh, I believe he has a blog called Sprocket World. So you can look that up. Like David Soper or Sprocket World. And this is a guy that has won the Golden Demon years ago. Like in the late 80s early 90s he won it years ago painting and building a model a custom tank model that was like a, a demon fused tank if you imagine like this tank that had like a giant corpulent demon attached to it 
and he won. He won the Golden Demon. He won, uh, you know, the Olympics of, of Warhammer painting, right? And he decided he was going to make another model and compete again after all this time. He was going to make something new. And he basically is creating, recreating, and revising the same model. He's well, yeah, revising isn't the right word, but he's building, he's building a a very similar demon tank, and he's been working on it for two years. And he's taken everything that he's learned in the interim from, you know, for thirty years or whatever, right? Um, and it's amazing, like everything that he's learned since then, he's improved vastly, right? He's learned all these new skills, all these new techniques. It's, it's remarkable. Um, definitely try and give that a look on, on Instagram or, or wherever you can. Uh, David Soper, Golden Demon. Amazing stuff, dude. Was that an evil de oh, or earthworm gym? Yeah, groovy. Yeah, <laughs> I was I was in the mindset of um, of Duke Nukem actually. Yes, yes, yes. It's all part of the same wheelhouse. I for the very for a very long time, I thought that all those Duke Nukem references were like original. But then groovy. <laughs> yeah, I think that was I think all of, all of that originated from from Evil Dead. It was many years later that I wa would watch Evil Dead, and it was like, oh, that's where that came from? Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> OJ1. What? OJ1. 10. Joey, it's like an anime arc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Everything is like an anime arc. Your life is an anime arc. Your life is in the... Uh, what is it called? Slice of life. That's the genre that your life is in. And then if, you, if you're like an athlete, then you're just like a sports anime guy. That's the arc. Battle Shonen. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, where do these parts go? I don't even know where they go. They just say to build it. Like, here, make this stuff. Put it where you want. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Just just, just figure it out. You you figure it out. It, it can go somewhere. I'm sure I'll find a use. I'll have to stare at this stuff for, like, several hours. Just stare at it. And then I'll see. I'll see the patterns. I'll see the matrix. And then I'll understand what to actually do with it. Fighting Fudons? <laughs> Wasn't that... Was that an American show, though? <laughs> Fighting Fudons. That's a, that's a name that I haven't heard for a long-ass time. Uh, Joey, Slice of Life is no fun? You need a bad guy in my life? Damn. You need an enemy? You need some kind of uh, antagonist? You're the protagonist. Now you need it. No, what you need is a... What you need is a rival character. You need to find yourself a rival... That you then become friends with. And then you'll respect each other. You'll have a begr begrudging respect. And your rival will be like the cool guy. Right? That all the girls love. That's basically <laughs> I'm describing like Hayaku and and like uh, Slam Dunk and practically a bunch of other anime. <laughs> ultimate Muscle. I get yeah. Ultimate Muscle is definitely a, a real anime. Fighting Fudons though. My God. Here I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna need a little refresher course on this. Fighting Fudons. Avatar, Avatar, the last airbender's real anime, guys. Don't let people tell you otherwise. Here, my god, fighting food odds. I'm thinking of the one with cows. Is that the one with their cows? Let me see this. 
Oh my god. I I barely remember this, dude. Fighting Foodons. <laughs> That's a deep cut there, uh, Joe. Good lord. That is a deep, deep cut. You got the deep cuts. Do you guys remember uh, Samurai Pizza Cats? That was a good one. Okay, let's see. OJ. What are we doing? What are we doing? Here, here. These. And now I need OJ114. Okay. Fighting food on. Now I'm going to have to watch like a YouTube video about that. See what you've done. Yes, yeah, Samurai Pizza. Oh, it's Not Slide. What's up, Not Slide? How's it going? How are you today? We are building some 30 minute missions extra packs uh, ba -ba -ba. I've got this is what we're working on now and I got a few other ones Doo -doo -doo. to play around with because why not Lord Bandai is pleased Bandai is, is like yes if you want to actually have more fun, you need to buy more things from us. Samurai Pizza Cats was your show, Joe? Oh man, yeah, it was so good. I thought it was, I thought it was peak anime <laughs> as a kid. I was like, my life is gonna revolve around this now. This is what I like, right? And I <laughs> uh, made a friends with a kid from. Uh, from Asia, from from Hong Kong, right? A uh, friend of the channel, Bacon. You guys know Bacon. Uh, a few years after or during Samurai Pizza Cats, I was like, you know, I met I met Bacon. We're kids. He's from Hong Kong. I'm like, ah, oh, so you must like, you must love Samurai Pizza Cats, then, right? You got, you like it? Are you into that? Is that a big thing over there? And he's like, no, no one likes that. That's for kids. It sucks sucks and it's dumb <laughs> you know I'm like he's like we like dragon ball over here okay dragon ball yu yu Hakushu. you guys aren't you guys have to level up to that first fried rice or the goat <laughs> not slide <laughs> i'm gonna have to pull up google again and look up fried ricer I think I did a really bad cut on this because I'm I'm getting my my stamina meter is, is is going down. My focus meter is going down. It's kind of a bad nub cut, but we'll live, we'll live. Okay. Let's just slap these babies on. There's only a few more steps. Doom. Okay, it goes like wah! It's like this. I think uh, I think that's how it goes. This is wrong. Joe, <laughs> what? It was so well written in English because they did whatever they wanted and made it funny. Oh, you have it on DVD. Nice, the complete collection. Best DVD pickup ever. Holy shit. That's sweet. Yeah, I mean, it was just one of those things that kind of became more popular in the West, and then in Japan, it was just like whatever. I don't. I don't think in Japan or like the rest of Asia, it was really a big thing. You know, I was I was shocked though. I was shook. I was like, "What? You don't like you don't like samurai pizza cats?" <laughs> I mean, yeah, he was already into like the stuff that would be cool like five years later, right? He was already into Dragon Ball and stuff like that hadn't yet blown up yet okay uh, OJ one but on one okay got two of these babies samurai pizza cats but seriously, fighting foodons. <laughs> I can't believe 
that you reminded me of something so incredibly old <laughs> and and obscure like that and i'm gonna have to take a deep dive am i gonna even sleep now i'm gonna be haunted by fighting foodons the hell <laughs> But yeah, back in the day, pretty much just watched any anime that was on TV because I was just starving for anime, you know? I watched Sailor Moon because I like was like, it's anime. Let's watch it. Watched Digimon. I watched, yeah, Ultimate Muscle or Kinikuman. But the OG, the real, the real genesis, my awakening, my anime awakening was definitely Robotech. You know, as as weird of a product that was Robotech. But, oh my god. The whole, the whole world of Robotech and Macross is so weird. We actually just saw from the whole Tokyo Hobby event that was going on that they showed a new a new model in the line for virtual what is it called Veritech fighter girls so that's interesting there you go I'm back to doing nice cuts there's a couple parts here that have some a little a little sketchy they're a little sketchy than the cuts these are a little nicer not saying that they're amazing but they're a little nicer oh wow these don't even attach in any particular way they just they're just saying that these are things these are little pieces of plastic that you can do something with what joey got a macros convention down here in la like recently damn that is cool that is cool. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to the the Macross model. The VF1, is it? From, from Macross Plus. That's just super, super exciting. I'm definitely going to pick that one up. Here, let's put all these bits here, because I'm not even really sure where I'm going to use it, how I'm going to use it. Let's put these things here. Very cool. Macross. You know, as much as I like Macross and Robotech, though, I haven't seen any of the the newer Robotech, or rather, Macross shows. I haven't actually seen those. These are all the forbidden sprinkles. These are all the nubs. Celebrate the love, nub nub. And I'm pretty sure this is all trash i have to double check just to make sure right because you know sometimes there's small important bits but i think this is legit garbage so let's just put it where it belongs in the trash okay so okay okay guys we are in the phase now where we get to play with our toys let's uh let's see let's see what we can do with this so for example, we can give her this big ass backpack, right? How does this work? How does how does this even mount? And the ideas are are cooking. I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. <laughs> She's got a huge backpack now. Yes. There we go. We did it. Here's my kit bash, guys. Do you like it? And okay, wait. Let's see. I guess we gotta look at the box to see like how you can how you can place this stuff. Okay, hold on a second. I think I have a gun. I think she has a hand where she can hold weapons, right? Time for banana. Mijin accomplished. That where is it? Let me see. We've got uh, we've got something for that.
Mission complete. Mission complete. Time for banana. Okay, let's see. Let's see our hand options. This is where I have some extra bits for my Mecha Masume kits. And let's just see. Time for banana. A victory banana? I think that's gonna be sweet. Okay, so let's see. In the case, can whip out her her gun. Nice. And even the sniper thingy. And it can go. You always gotta make the sound effects when you start transforming your your stuff. Put the hand in there. Oh, Swap this baby out. <laughs> it's fun just messing around. Yes, this is like Bionicles. We've been talking about this before. Modern Bionicles. If you guys miss Bionicles, I got your Bionicle right here. Right here. Pew, pew. <laughs> Let's have her kneel. Cool. Now I get to play with my toys. This isn't as cool as Bionicles, though. <laughs> man, see, you gotta you gotta watch out, man, because the the Bionicle fans they'll they'll jump on you. They'll jump on you. <laughs> like, did you just say Bionicles aren't cool? I'll have you know that Matatui was the best Bionicle in the world. <laughs> yeah. It's cuter. It's cuter than Bionicles, yeah. This is pretty neat. I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun just with this alone. And yes, you can add these little bitties here. What do we want to do? Are we going to give her missile arms or missile, missile calves? Yes, I think we'll have missile calves. There we go. There you go, I did it guys. I made my own custom gunpla or plamo. I did it guys. I did it. I'm ready for the I'm ready for the GBWC. Let's go. Let's go. Oop, that doesn't go. I was just saying let's go, but that doesn't go. Hold on. Do these Okay, that doesn't quite fit, but we'll make it we'll make it work for now, just to, for the sake of doing it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yes, you can put these mines in her hand, but I think you have to get the right parts. And we have all of these. We have all these wacky clips, which I'm not really sure what to do with just now. But let's just do that. Sure, why not? Let's just stick a bunch of crap onto a bunch of other crap. Why not? <laughs> this looks dumb. This looks dumb. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna just run with it for now. Yep, there you go. Got some Yes, I've uh, I've armed my uh, Spinatia with missile-mounted calf missiles. This improves her offensive abilities while while not having to compensate for her mobility. It also acts as a thruster to give her some extra extra movement boost. <laughs> oh wait, I think the wings will look a lot cooler here. Yeah. Oh, things are falling off. It's okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're messing around. <laughs> Clearly we're messing around. I like this a lot. This is really neat. And uh, yeah, the the ideas are forming. We're, we're getting there. We're something something the brain is activating and I'm getting ideas for what we can do in a more like, you know, actual conversion kind of concept you know we're coming up with stuff 
you just need to play. You just need to play around and have a bit of fun. And then you can the ideas will start flowing. And of course, uh, there's two more. We'll get to these as well later on. And I think between all of this stuff, uh, we'll we'll settle on something for for my models. And when we get there, it'll be fun. And the process, the process is fun too. Let's put it that way. It's always fun just simply playing around with things. We're doing the rest now after the pie. We're going to be we're going to eat the pie. I'm going to eat the pie, and then I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, Ashwin, do a mashup model of the Enterprise D and a waifu. Ooh, Ashwin, Ashwin. Now you're now you're having big brain thoughts. See, I'm I'm just a smooth brain, but that right there. I don't know how much uh, I don't know how much weed that you've had thus far, but that's. Those are some those are some big brain thoughts. <laughs> okay guys. So this is what we've done so far. We've done this, we've done this, we've messed around, we've had some fun, we've had some laughs, we've looked at things. These are coming along as well, of course. I'm gonna finish them shortly. Probably off stream. And then pictures will be taken on Instagram, blah blah blah.